Hi there, welcome to Outcome 6, the uh, the last outcome video in the 2396 series going through the requirements of the course. We're going to just look at the, the last little bit that is required in the assessments and then we're going to introduce um, some mock assessments um, that I have created for further study on this. And what I'll do following this video is we'll have a couple, I say a couple, probably, probably a handful of videos going through the... Uh, the design process stage by stage working on the mock project that is included at the end of this video. All right, so to start with, outcome six, it's from the assignment um, area. So it challenges the assignment area and it's just to be able to apply design and verification procedures for single and polyphase electrical installations. There are with the project uh, six questions as well. And I've got some examples of these included um, just to kind of pick your brains at your, your design um, work. So you need to apply the design calculations relevant to the installation's design, select suitable installation components, provide information, obviously you know, handing over to a client, and then actually critically compare the criteria that is designed to the criteria that is um, either returned to yourself as a designer or as the constructor from the initial verification to make sure that it is as designed, so to speak. So individually with these, yeah, you need to have a good understanding on the, the way to use the formulas. You, you, you'll have access, obviously, through the project to have all the resources at your disposal. But do be familiar with, with uh, the important ones. Um, from the wine regulations course that you've probably or hopefully have done before, you would have gone through hopefully a uh, selection in in a part five area on the cable calculation process using a lot of appendix four, where you did I, B, I, N, I, Z, I, T, C, A, C, I, C, G, all of that stuff. I did do in the previously in this series a little example cable calculation video. Revise those formula and just be familiar with them. You'll have to understand how to use the, uh, the adiabatics, both of them, verification of Voldrop, uh, and also some of the formula required for testing. Um, that's probably as much as you'll need. You may, obviously, depending on the circumstance, you may need to be able to to, um, to dabble with a bit of power factor, uh, such as you know just using the power factor with your design current calculation. You probably won't be challenged on an anything from a trigonometry perspective, um, such as you know verifying values of impedance or reactance, because. That's more of a component or a particular circuit designed for a specific load. Uh, they won't go into that level. Um, they'll try and keep it simple so that you're just going to apply these formulas here. The next bit, select suitable electrical installation components. So obviously your, your scenario, your design should be descriptive enough to give you a good understanding on the environment. So the users, the utilization of the system, the building, the building structure. And with this information, you can then decide on on consumer control equipment, you know, um, what is suitable, you know, um, types of equipment? Is it sim is it simple plastic switches? Is it needs of uh, industrial? Is it needs of uh, isolation, me mechanical maintenance uh, switching, functional switching? You know, what methods of switching control are needed? Uh, earthing arrangements. The design will actually, in the scenario, give you the supply characteristic earthing arrangement. Um, with that, you'll then obviously move forward with the design. And external influences, yeah, well, again, that's down to the the, um, the individual scenario that is described. So it might be commercial, it might be industrial, it might be, you know, it might be domestic. Um, but further on, it could be horticultural, it could be agricultural, it could be a hospital, it could be a swimming pool. So, um, you know, have a good, have a good, um, a general viewpoint on those and understand how they would vary with the different external influences. Wiring and containment systems, same thing as above really. Cables and conductors, you know, decide your cable types. Um, with your design you're obviously going to state what type of cable, you're going to state the, the uh, thermal limits of the cable, you're going to state the volt drop of the cable and the uh, even the manufacturer, you know, as I said in the previous videos, if you can actually maybe go to the manufacturer and capture a, a, um, a data sheet and add that, that will then support your decision-making process. That would be great. Um, conductor cross-sectional area will have to prove our select a selection of cable sizes with with you know accurate calculations. Um, protected device types. Yep, we'll have to decide why we're going to choose a BS three hundred three six fuse over a BSCN six hundred eight nine eight 
probably not going to do that, are we? So we're going to make sure that we achieve suitable protective devices. Uh, but first of all, we may need to determine what we need with regards to additional protection, protection for safety, what protective measures are in the installation. That might dictate what type of protective devices we select anyway. Um, similar with earthfall protection, is it needed, is it not needed? If you have part of your installation that is uh, electrically separated, for example, so there may be there may certain circumstances for part of the installation. Um, but, you know, once you know the scenario, you can kind of take all of that a little bit at a time. Same with earthing and bonding, isolation switching, um, accessories. It all depends on the circumstance giving in the scenario. But do be aware of the content of BS7671, what it actually says with regards to selecting different types. You'll probably find in your... Um, in your, your bigger exam, the uh, sat down reading exam, that's what they're looking to achieve in that exam. So you'll have one question which will say, here's a scenario, we're on a construction site, and then they'll have a couple of questions chipping away at that. And some of them will be from the main content of BS7671, but a good chunk of those will be from 704, which will be um, obviously with regards to external influences, RCD protection, cable selection, and things like that. Um, so, you know, familiarity with the regulations is essential here. Uh, transformer types, final circuits, distribution circuits. Obviously, if we're going to have a distribution circuit, we need to make sure we can set a volt drop, make sure the volt drop isn't the maximum value of volt drop because we have to earn allowance for further distribution uh, or final circuitry. Also, the disconnection times change according to a distribution circuit or a final circuit. So, you know, you need to establish the differences between the two. We'll also notice with the um, design criteria, we need to look at the, uh, the maximum demand and uh, apply diversity. So, you know, establishing the difference between your distribution circuits and your final circuits is very important for that point as well. And lastly, SPDs, if relevant. 6.3. Provide information relating to the electrical installation design in a suitable format. So this is all about your handover, really. How are you going to hand over the information to the client? So, you know, what drawings will you provide? Will you draw them, complete them? Uh, there is an operation and maintenance manual. There's mention of that in Guide Snow 3. There's mention of that in the, in the IET's maintenance manual. Um, it'll compile the installation certificate. It'll compile the manufacturer's criteria. It'll also, maybe depending on the scale of the installation, actually give instructions to the users on the operation of the system and isolation of the system. Um, there are some very good sample OEMs. You won't have to necessarily create a full uh, drastic OEM. What you'll probably need to do is just compile your drawing in the project and provide as much information as you can that supports the design. Um, and then provide what would be a duplicate of the anticipated initial verification values really or some kind of documentation that says these are the anticipated initial verification readings. You don't really need to kind of create a drastic OEM manual that goes you know this and this and this for a procedural perspective. It's more a case of compiling the information but making sure the the, um, the information is legible and making sure the, uh, the, the client, the recipient of the uh, information can actually you know use it. Um, all of it is very relative. Um, when we do our design, we're going to obviously obtain values of anticipated or calculated uh, full loop impedance, ZS. We'll also verify things like um, prospective fault currents with our supply characteristic information, R1, R2s with our installed cable circuitry, etc. However, there's a difference between what we expect in design and what we have in reality. And we need to understand where those expectations can differ. So if I had an insulated system such as a twin earth system like a domestic installation or a small uh, shop or something and it was an insulated sheath system surface clip direct I won't expect parallel paths to make much of an impact on my ZS values and I expect my R1 R2s to be pretty much as calculated by design or determined by design. But if I was installing such as um, you know in a factory with still still trunking, still tr uh, still conduit kind of systems, and you know we're going to go to the back boxes with each one. Um, R1, R2s can be verified before the parallels are introduced, but really the initial verification will include them after installation with all the other circuitry, and so there will be an anticipation of parallels. So we would say, well, what does that mean from our review point? So we'd say, okay, well, those R1, R2s that we obtain via measurement will probably be a little bit less than the value we've got by design. So those ZSs will also be a little bit less than we have by design. The prospective fault currents may be a little bit higher because of the reduced circuit impedance that we have compared with the design. Um, if, however, we have a value that is measured that is exceeded, we have to understand what kind of problems uh, could create that. So it could be high resistive um, connections, 
uh, within our selected switching devices. It could just be a simple poor installation or erection method. Um, but we have to be able to look at the design criteria, look at the criteria provided by initial verification, look at them and determine to what degree we're satisfied with that. And that's that whole outcome done. Um, what I'm going to add, I'm going to put a link in the description to this video, will be a link to a Dropbox download. Um, the Spark Ninja website will be launched very, very soon. This is going out um, still in May, but the Spark Ninja website will be launched in June and we'll have all the downloads and documents on that. But for now, I'm going to use a Dropbox link. I'll update the link uh, if the you know with the video description if it changes later on. But if you actually do download that and you choose to have a go, you'll have these documents in there. There's a mock assessment which is obviously going to be an open book assessment which challenges your ability to use the regulations and understand design. Um, it's fairly simple, I'll be honest. Okay. Um, the other two documents combined for the project, so you have the scenario of the project given, so it gives you the, uh, the utilization of the building, the walls, fabrics, the supply characteristics, it gives you uh, who's responsible for this, who's responsible for that, and then there's a drawing to go alongside it that you can then use to lay out your circuits and things. Um, if you want to have a go at them, then have a go at them. They're downloadable via the, the, uh, the link in the description. But I'm going to then start creating some videos to go through these. I'll probably start with videos that go through the mock assessment. Um, might actually do that in one video. It might be a little bit long, but I'll go through that in one maybe. And then I'll start doing some on the design. Now, the design will be quite large. I mean, typically, you're looking at 40 plus hours to work on this. I'm going to simplify that the best I can and just go. Um, I'm going to explain some procedures for two or three circuits. And then I'll just say I'm going to apply that for the rest. And then we'll see what we get at the end. I'm not going to go through the whole process on a video. I think that'll be too lengthy. Uh, but let's move on with that. And we will see. Um, I'm probably going to take a week or so for me to upload this next video. Um, but that's the, that's, that's the rest of the course kind of presented to you. Um, if you want to have a go at this, then links in the description have a little play um you can email me if you look at my about you can get an email address if you want to email me a bit of feedback on a question interpret a question or submit and i'll have a look if you want it's up to you all right guys um good stuff um enjoy the rest of your bank holiday weekend if you know you're watching this right now and i will see you probably in a week yeah cheers bye